Good morning. It's, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, my name is Brian Gerke uh, from Willow Garage, and I'm here to welcome you to the first RossCon. Uh, very excited that all you guys came out. Uh, we've already, frankly, exceeded my expectations in terms of what kind of turnout we could get here, and I think it says a lot about the, the future of the community that we built around open source software for robots, that you folks found it important enough to come out and spend your weekend in St. Paul uh, talking about it. So we've got a great program lined up, and the talks, I think, are going to be fantastic. Uh, but this is also just a chance for us to all meet each other. So most of us only know each other by email addresses, and this is a chance to put a face to the name, uh, really get to talking about what it is we're doing with robots, where we see it all going, establish new collaborations, start companies, whatever you think is you know, relevant. So welcome to Roscon 2012. First, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, we've got some great companies who have uh, made this event really possible. Uh, and I encourage you throughout the weekend to check out our exhibit area next door. So a lot of the sponsors have set up tables out there. They're showing off robots. It's also intended to be a robot hacking area. So it's a place for you to go over. I know there are a lot of turtle bots and variants on turtle bots. There's opportunities to write code, make robots do things. Whatever you think is fun, that room is, is wide open. I'd also like to thank our organizing committee. Um, couldn't have pulled this off without this group of people who uh, really put a lot of time and effort into uh, making the core decisions about where we're going to hold the conference, how it's going to run. Um, and we've got um, Ryan Gariope and Matt Williamson right here. Cedric Perdalier couldn't make it, um, but a big thanks to him. Also the program committee. So. These are the folks who reviewed the uh, proposals that we got and really influenced the uh, decision as to what presentations you're going to see here. So this, uh, a big thanks to these folks. We recruited these people, just so you know, from the SIG coordinators. So these are the folks who signed up for the Fuerte uh, special interest groups, and we figured that was the right group of people to be looking over the, the proposals. So those are the folks that really shaped the program which you should all have a copy of in your, uh, in your swag bag. Uh, I think it's a great program. Uh, and I'll mention that we had a great response to the call for proposals. So we ended up with an acceptance rate of 27%, which um, if you guys were at ICRA this week, this is a lot lower than ICRA. So we're, it's great to be, a, to be able to afford to be selective. Um, and I think, uh, I think you'll be happy with the presentations that, that we've got for you. Uh, a, a little bit of uh, logistics, bookkeeping. We'll have a break uh, each day at 10.30, and then again at 3.30, and we've got lunch at 12.30 each day. The breaks and the lunches are catered. They're going to happen right outside, so they're going to set up a buffet there for lunch each day, and also coffee and snacks. That's all included with your uh, registration. Another person I'd like to thank is our publicity chair, Ken Conley. Um, why am I showing you a picture of Ken? Um, because this evening, we have an hour blocked off for lightning talks. So uh, this is an opportunity to uh, get up here on stage and frankly say whatever you want. Uh, if you've got some piece of software that you want to advertise, then you know, spend a couple of minutes to tell people about it. You've got an interesting project that you want to tell people about, get up here, make it fun, whatever you want to do. Um, you can come up here and say it. And where is Ken? Ken's at the back. So you need to, if you want to do a lightning talk, you need to see Ken sometime today but, uh, before 4 p.m. Ken's the MC for the lightning talks. He's going to put together a schedule. If you want to use slides, you need to get them to Ken. He's going to put that all together into one deck uh, so that we can run through it quickly. And Ken's going to hand out time. I expect it's not more than a few minutes each. Um, and you don't have to use slides. Don't feel obliged to make up slides. So this is a chance to really talk about anything, make it, make it fun and interesting. So let's talk about you guys. Um, this is a breakdown of registration by type. As of yesterday afternoon, we had 201 people registered, uh, which, like I said, totally exceeded at least my expectations. Uh, if you look at the breakdown by type, what I think is really most promising is that uh, we've got 40% 
non-students. So some of these folks, some of you folks are maybe professors, meaning non-students, but the majority of the non-students are actually working for companies. And I think that is where the future of Ross is. It's in getting the software out into industry. People actually using it to do product development. I think that the, obviously we're still supporting the research community and that's a big part of our user base, but the future, to my mind, is on the commercial side. It's getting the stuff that we're building out of the lab and into the real world. I made a word cloud because everybody needs a word cloud. Uh, this is a word cloud of your affiliations. So you get some sense of what's important. Lots of universities. Willow Garage is somewhat prominent in there, but also lots of companies. Um, and again, I think that's, that's really where the, where the future is. Very few of you actually filled in geographical information. So this is actually not taken from the registration. This is taken from uh, a crowdsourced map that is linked to from the Ross.org wiki. Uh, so this is you guys reporting, some of you and some other folks reporting where you are as a Ross user or Ross developer. Uh, so as you can see, we've got pretty good coverage in North America and in Europe, and we're starting to get penetration in Asia. We've got friends using Ross in Japan, South Korea, and I think that's only gonna increase. You guys may have heard uh, about the Open Source Robotics Foundation. There was a press release, I think, last week about it. So this is an exciting new development. We've been talking about creating some kind of uh, nonprofit foundation to support work in open source robot software for a long time. And we went ahead and, and did that recently. Um, there'll be, you'll be hearing more about this over time, what, what kind of projects we're gonna be working on. We're still putting the organization together. Uh, but one thing I will mention is that we're hiring. So check out the jobs page if you want to work for the Open Source Robotics Foundation. It'll be in the Bay Area. It's a pretty cool place to live. Also connected with the Open Source Robotics Foundation, you all know that we had the Ross Fuerte release a uh, month before la last month, in fact. Um, there are Fuerte t-shirts for sale out front, and proceeds go to the Open Source Robotics Foundation. Uh, we're taking cash, and I think we've got a, a credit card thing set up as well. So if you want a Ross Fuerte shirt, those are for sale out front uh, starting at the first break. We had a last minute sponsor in uh, NREC. Um, and we're very happy to have NREC sponsor. And in fact, um, they're sponsoring a reception that's happening tonight. So at the close of the lightning talk, six o'clock, there's gonna be a catered uh, hosted bar reception out here. So that's roughly six to 7.30. So it's a good time to mix, have a drink, get a snack, and we'd really like to thank uh, NREC for putting that on. More logistics, there is free Wi-Fi here. Uh, this is the ESS ID, and you go to a web page, and you put in, uh, password is the wrong thing, that should be promo code. You'll go to a web page, you put in promo code, all caps downtown. It's been a little bit unreliable, but it seems to be mostly working. Related point, um, there aren't that many places to plug in laptops in here. There are tables uh, across from the uh, Town Square B where the exhibits are, and there are charging stations there. So if you need to recharge something, you can go over there. Birds of a feather. So like I said at the beginning, one of the points of having a meeting like this is so we can get to know each other. If we just wanted to have talks, we could just do webcasts. The point of coming together physically is to be able to have ad hoc conversations with each other. So also next door in the exhibit area, on this wall, there uh, are post-its and markers, and that's an opportunity for you guys to self-organize into birds of a feather sessions. So it's very simple. If you have a topic that you wanna propose, go in there, write it on a sheet of paper, stick it on the wall, say where you wanna meet, when you wanna meet, and people will come by with other sticky notes and vote to indicate interest. And then if there's enough, in enough interest, you guys should come together and talk about whatever it is. Um, I recommend scheduling those talks after hours or during the breaks. Um, that way people won't be conflicted with coming in here and, and potentially missing the presentations. 